Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. James and St. Brendan's for Sunday, January the 24th. This is our 10th reading of service. Please join us in our opening hymn, singing new song.
reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have, who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will sing Psalm 62, verses 6 to 14, responsibly by the full verse. For God alone, my soul in silence waits. Truly, my hope is in Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in Him always, O people, for out your hearts before Him, for God is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales they are lighter than a breath, all of them together. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery, take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it, that power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord, for you repay everyone according to his deeds. Lord God, in a threatened world, we look to you as our rock and hope. Hear us as we pour out our hearts to you, and give us your grace and protection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God, saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat lending their nets. Immediately he called to them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, growing up, we were, we were dog people growing up. Uh, my parents are still dog people. And on the weekends, on Sundays, my dad and my sister and I would take our dog, Taffy, this beautiful one-eyed German Shepherd Coley, um, down to the Grand River, and we would go for these, you know, hour-long walks. They were lovely. In the summer, every now and again, my dad would bring some fishing poles. My dad grew up fishing and hunting, um, and I guess he kind of wanted to pass on the love for fishing to his girls. It didn't happen. <laughs> um, but you know, it was, it was nice because, you know, like my dad, my dad's a storyteller. He really is. And you know, he would sit there and he'd be telling us stories about him and my grandpa, and he'd be trying to teach us how to put the worms on the hook, which was really gross. Um, and it was just this lovely, lovely afternoon, you know? And as much as, you know, I would honestly would much rather watch paint dry than fish, it was a great experience. Um, but my experience with fishing is very different than Simon, Andrew, James, and John's experience with fishing. These four gentlemen, they fished because they had to. It was their trade. It was what they did to put food on the table. It was what they did to help um, take care of their family. Mine was just about spending good time with them. Imagine how strange it would have been for these four gentlemen when this stranger comes by and says, follow me and I will show you how to fish for people. Interesting enough, what the scripture tells us is that they immediately left. They immediately went with him. You know, it doesn't say why. I mean, you could hypothesize a few things. I mean, maybe for Simon and Andrew, they had just had a really lousy day of fishing. I mean, Israel's pretty hot. And, you know, maybe they were just tired. And, you know, here comes this person saying, I want to fish for people. And they're going, oh, okay, maybe the new way of fishing was in the world. And same with James and John. I mean, they were with their dad. So I wonder how old they were. You know, and here's Jesus' invitation to follow him. And, Maybe for them it was just a way to kind of spread their wings and get out from underneath their dad. I don't know. Either way, for whatever reason they left, they chose to follow Jesus and become, uh, you know, learn how to fish for men. It took a great deal of courage and strength. And really, it was pretty custom in that time for a rabbi to gather students and have those students live with them and follow them. And since people knew Jesus as a rabbi, and it was the beginning of his ministry, it kind of made sense that these four men would pick up and leave. As I said, though, it was pretty great of them to do it as quickly as they did. I mean, think for a second how it would feel if you just had to automatically pick up and move and leave your family and friends behind. It would take a lot of courage. You know, following Christ, for many, is really simple. It's like breathing. You don't, you don't even think about it. But then there are others where 
following Christ is filled with fear and uncertainty. Years ago, one of the many things I did was I helped people as they journeyed into the Christian faith, as they prepared for baptism. And there was this one young man, I remember, he would come every week as he was supposed to, and we would talk about baptism and the Eucharist and what it means to follow Jesus. But the other thing we talked about was the anger of his family and friends. Because they didn't understand his desire to become Christian, his desire to be baptized, and why he was answering this call. And in the end, he chose still to be baptized. But he did lose a few friends because of it. People don't understand why we follow Christ. Even as people raised in the faith, surrounded by family and friends who are of the faith, sometimes when we make a decision based on our faith, even our family and friends are like, wait, wait. It takes a lot of courage to think about the things that Christ would like us to do now. We never know where this journey with Jesus is going to take us. We never know the challenges that are going to come before us. All we know is that we need to be brave and know that God is there to give us strength. And we need to answer the call because Jesus is calling you. How is Jesus calling you? Before you say anything, listen, I know that you're watching. And I know that you, when we're allowed to be open from here, and I don't feel for a second that you're a good person, and that you do all sorts of things that God is calling you to do. But the thing you need to understand with Jesus' call is that it's not a singular call. It's a daily call. Every day is a call. Every day is a journey. Every day there is a new task. A call to maybe look at a new location or maybe a new relationship. To reflect on one's life. Maybe go over some past regrets. Maybe ask for, for, for forgiveness or accept somebody's apology. Or maybe just accept the fact that you are forgiven and you are worthy. And you can move forward in whatever it is you need to move forward in. How is Jesus calling you? Maybe there's a new challenge in your life. Something that you're debating with, struggling with. You're just not sure what to do. How is Jesus calling you? We all know that voice in the back of our head is the Holy Spirit. And as I said before, she doesn't have a lot of voice. She whispers. But you need to listen, because that is God calling you and directing you. The thing, though, with God's call is that sometimes we need help to decipher it. We need help and guidance. And we get that help by being followers of Christ. We get that by being members of the body of Christ. St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians say, you can easily enough see how this kind of thing works by looking no further than one's own body. Our body has many parts, limbs and organs and cells, but no matter how many parts you name, you're still one body. That's exactly the same with Christ. God designed these bodies to, for us to bodily understand our own lives together as a church. Every part dependent on every other part for understanding and for strength. As a church and as a community, we are the body of Christ. We're not all ears, we're not all eyes, but we all have our parts and we all have our jobs to play in this world. And sometimes, maybe your role in this world, maybe your call is to help somebody else understand what God is calling them to. Sometimes we need guidance, we need support. I heard God's call into the Anglican Communion and into priesthood for many, many years. 
but I was absolutely terrified. I truly didn't believe I was worthy. I did not believe God would call me. I mean, I'm a woman. And then, if I did answer the call, what would that mean for my family? I knew there would be sacrifices with it. And I'll be honest, at the time, I wasn't sure if I could make those sacrifices or if I was prepared to make those sacrifices. However, with the support and the guidance of other members of the body of Christ, my friends and my family, I was able to answer God's call. It can be absolutely terrifying to answer Jesus' call to follow him. But the benefits of answering the call completely outweigh any fears you may have. Why has God chosen you? Why is God calling you or calling me? Honestly, I don't know. I do hope that um, when I die, that I do go to heaven, and that God and I are going to have a little chit chat. You know, I'd like to have a few answers about making sure that. I said everything that I was supposed to say, that I learned everything I was supposed to learn, that I supported everybody I was supposed to support, that I answered the call the way you wanted to answer. This is what I do know to be true. That when you answer the call to follow Christ, you will feel nothing but joy. You will feel nothing but pure gladness. And you will be given a strength like you have never been given before. I think maybe that's why Simon and Andrew and James and John left the boats that day. That maybe they heard the Holy Spirit. And they heard her say, you know what, go. Be safe. He's good. You can trust him. Oh, but heads up, he's going to ask a lot of you. But don't worry, because the return is going to be amazing. So here is my question. How is God calling you today? What is the Holy Spirit saying to you? Yes, what God asks of us is a lot. But if you are willing to put down your net, the return will be fantastic. Amen.
Let us stand together and confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As God is moved by the sincerity of our repentance, so too God is pleased by the faithfulness of our prayers. Let us offer our prayers to God, saying, In your mercy, hear us, Lord. You have called us, O God, to follow you. Give us the grace to listen to your call, to lay aside the things of this world, and to follow you. In your mercy, Hear us, Lord. You have sent us, O God, into the world to tell the story of your love and faithfulness. Give us a holy zeal for the proclamation of the gospel in this place and in all the world. In your mercy, hear us, Lord. You have called, O God, persons of varieties of gifts to serve your church. Bless, we pray, the ministries of musicians and artists, scholars and writers, pastors and teachers, that their work enrich our common life and offer us a glimpse of the life to come. In your mercy, hear us, Lord. You gave life, O God, for us and for all people. We remember before you those who are sick or suffering, especially Elizabeth Ebert, Jean Eden, Lois Greenslade, Louise Eaton, Matt Uselman, Alan Quinn, Brett, Tammy, Pam, Mary, Simon, Colin, Baby Axel, and Ruth. We also pray for those who mourn, especially Elaine Paquette, with the recent loss of her husband Gaston, brother Charles Eddingham, and sister-in-law Madonna. As you have reached out to us in love, so inspire us to be present to those who have need before you. In your mercy, hear us, Lord. God of love and hope, you made the world and care for creation. But the world feels strange right now. The news is full of stories about coronavirus. Some are, people are worried that they might get ill. Others are anxious for their family and friends. Be with them and help them to find peace. We pray for the doctors, nurses, and scientists, and all who are working to discover the right medicines to help those who are ill. Thank you that even in these anxious times, you are with us. Help us to put our trust in you and keep us safe. In your mercy, hear us, Lord. As we are faithful in prayer, O oh God, so make us faithful in following you, that loving and serving you all the days of our lives, we may know the joy of the resurrection and may look with longing for your coming in power. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He 
welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you in heart and deliver you from all your sins. Be firm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you at home.
holy all we offer you this day and strengthen us in that calling. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right that we should praise you, gracious God, for you created all things. You formed us in your own image, male and female. You created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us, but opened a path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel, and through your servants Abraham and Sarah, gave the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage into freedom, and through the prophets, you renewed your promise of salvation. Therefore, with them and with all your saints who have served you in every age, we give you thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O sun in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O sun in the highest. Holy God, source of life and goodness, all creation rightly gives you praise. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He healed the sick and ate and drank with outcasts and sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night he freely gave himself to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, in his perfect sacrifice, just his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By rising into life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon these gifts, that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. 
These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Dear friends, I invite you at this moment, wherever you may be, to receive Christ in communion with the saints and gathering of God's people when seen and yet present with us now. Many are made one. We receive you, Lord Jesus Christ. With the saints we worship you, with the angels we adore you, with your whole church we proclaim your reign. Come to us, O Lord, and make us one in thee. Amen.
graduate and go back to the class. Um, we will be sending out, hopefully in the next week or so, you will be getting a very large package. Um, it will have your registry report, it will have your income tax, and it will have a nice little something for Lent for me. It will have your Zoom link. If you have a computer, we'll also get an email you that link for the registry. If you don't have a computer, we now have a 1-800 number that you get to use to call in because your voice is important. It's really important that you come to the registry. Um, so if you don't have a computer, please use the 1-800 number so please mark February 14th on your calendar at 11 a.m. Our closing hymn is Take My Life and Let It Be. Love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.